Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're going to be going over my team selection for Game Week 33 and any transfers that I'm thinking of making as well. So if you're excited for the video, drop a like down below, leave a comment, what are your plans for Game Week 33, subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So, starting things off in goal, we do have Petrovic, who's got Everton at home. But I am not above playing Onana at all, because Petrovic has just not been great lately at all for Chelsea. And even though I think that United will concede, I think that it kind of... I think he's just kind of probably get more save points or something against Bournemouth away. I mean, Bournemouth have not exactly uh, been bad lately, but I think that that might just be the better fixture. You know, Everton, I think, will score against Chelsea because Sheffield United have scored against Chelsea. Burnley have scored against Chelsea. They're just not very good at the back. I don't want to play double Chelsea defence in the slightest. So I might just play Onana this week, uh, Bournemouth away, and then just hope for the best because the options are just very, very slim at the moment. Again, this is my last week before I play my three hit, uh, my free hit in 34. So... Um, yeah, I, I, I haven't had a clean sheet in like since game week 28. So I, I, I really want one. <laughs> out of, not just my goalkeeper, out of all my defenders as well. So I really would like a clean sheet because I've not had one in four, five game weeks, whatever. So I'm hoping that Onana, who's got Bournemouth away, could maybe be the be the difference there. Because I'm just kind of sick and tired of playing Petrovic. He's just been so, so bad on my game week 30 wildcard that I just don't really want to play double Chelsea defence. Um, so that's, I think, going to be my keeper. is going to be Onana, who's got Bournemouth away. Uh, at the back, we've got Bradley, who's got Palace at home. Van Heck, who's got Burnley away. And then Gusto, who's got Everton at home as well. So um, as of right now, I'm not sure if Bradley is obviously going to lose his spot. It depends on the injury to Trent and whether he's back in the squad and stuff. I think maybe I could squeeze one more fixture out of Bradley. I don't think he'll play in the double, but again, that doesn't matter to me because I can just free hit in 34 regardless. If I can just get him for Palace at home, then I'm absolutely fine with that. Um, and then obviously Van Heck, who's got Burnley away. It's not the worst fixture in the world, but I've just not really got any other options at the moment. My only other, well, my only other option right now is Udogi, who's got Newcastle away. And I don't know if that's probably going to be the best fixture to play Udogi in for. So yeah, I'm going to play Bradley, who's got Palace at home, Van Heck, who's got Burnley away, and then Gusto, who's got Everton uh, at home. Again, I just don't want to play double Chelsea defence. Gusto did, of course, not uh, play against Sheffield United. Wasn't even in the squad, but apparently he was just tired. He's not injured. He was ill before like the last couple of games or something, so he was just kind of recovering. So that's why... I mean, it's... A, on paper, it's an easy fixture. That's, that's probably why Poch was like, oh, I'm just going to rest him because we should win this. Obviously, it didn't happen that way. But um, yeah, I, uh, I I think he will be fine. If he's not, obviously, I, I'm, I've got two free transfers this week regardless. And I'll be bringing in a defender. So I can always play them over Gusto. But yeah, going from, no, going from double Chelsea defense to potentially no Chelsea defense, I probably it's probably going to be a week where they keep a clean sheet just because that's how it's been going for me lately uh but yeah that's that's the back i mean it's it's all right but obviously there's no arsenal there there's there's no bournemouth there which obviously is highly owned by a lot of people i mean bournemouth don't exactly have a great fixture this week man united at home but um yeah i mean hopefully i just i just love a green arrow man i've had green arrow since game week 29 or 28 or whatever so i'd look uh, red arrow should i say so uh yeah hopefully we can get a green arrow this week but yeah the defense is very much like all over the place all very low owned players as well so it's very much a completely against template but uh yeah that's the back line again i've got two free transfers and 1.4 mil in the bank we already spoke about my potential transfers in yesterday's video so we'll obviously talk about it again more in today's video but this is kind of what the team's looking like so far so that's the defense and the goalkeeper all okay fixtures on paper but you never know what's going to happen anyway in midfield we have son who's got newcastle away uh do not mind playing son who's got newcastle away at all i think it's actually a really good fixture for son i think he'll actually quite uh, go quite big in that fixture we then have zaka who's got villa at home which again is another okay fixture but the fact that zaka has been coming off early and obviously been missing games as well and champions league football coming up it's a little bit worrying there uh, i've also got palmer who's got everton at home obviously going to be playing him this week regardless and i've also got saka who's got crystal palace at home too who i think potentially could actually be my captain these uh, this week as well i'm not completely uh decided yet um my other bench option is garnacho who's got bournemouth away and i could very well just go all just go all in for man united this week and just play Garnacho instead of somebody else, uh, instead of one of my front frees, which I'm, again, I'm not completely against either. I've, I've got a little bit of a benching headache this week, especially because I've got two free transfers as well. Like I have to make a transfer. So that's like another kind of uh, <laughs> thing to think about. But yeah, all in all, the midfield's kind of fine. Like if I didn't have to make a midfield transfer, like I'd be fine playing these. But again, I could also play Garnacho as well if I really wanted to. But uh, either way, yeah, that's the midfield there. 
all penalty takers. Uh, hopefully, they can get some points. Uh, then up the top, we've got Isaac, who's got Spurs at home. Haaland, who's got Luton at home, who, of, of course, is my captaincy. And then Solanke, who's got Man United at home as well. And again, this is what I mean. Like, I could very well just play Garnacho instead of Solanke. I mean, I'm benching a penalty taker for Garnacho, but Garnacho's been really good lately. I mean, I know he came off early-ish again against Liverpool, but obviously played really, really well against Chelsea. And I think he's just probably one of Man United's better players this season. I'm not worried about him not starting. It's just... Um, yeah, it's just his minutes, really. But Bournemouth away, it's not... A, I think it could be good for Man United. I think counter-attacking football against Bournemouth could suit Garnacho really, really well. So I could just play him. You know, I know that Slanky is a bit of a... It's a bit of a rough benching, but, like, I'm, I'm fine with, with, with this kind of midfield and this up top and, and this back line. But, again, I've got transfers to make, so I need to kind of sort that out. But uh, all in all, this is kind of what the team looks like as of right now. Again, the, the bench is strong as well. Like... Um, I'm obviously going to get rid of Lascelles this week because he's just, you know, fodder at the moment. Um, but at the moment, yeah, uh, yeah like I say, the, the bench isn't bad at all. So this is what my team's kind of looking like for game week 33. Uh, it, it, it looks okay on paper, but at the end of the time, at the end of the day, I've got two free transfers, so I've got to make one. So uh, that's how the team looks. Let's move over to the free transfer. So, of course, I've got 1.4 mil in the bank and I've got two free transfers as well. So in yesterday's video, I spoke about getting rid of Lascelles for Ruben Diaz uh, because he's kind of like the only nailed uh, City defender. And I don't really want to pay 5.5 mil for a defender, but it kind of like that's that's the premium like that's premium price he's going to be playing all the all the fixtures obviously i've got minus 0 0.3 so i'd have to get rid of saka and bring in foden so uh if i did go through with this um i'd have 0 0.1 mil in the bank which does give me a bit of a headache with bradley down the line but i'd probably get rid of solanke after 34 um and then just play because obviously in in 35 i'll be playing gusto and Udogi because they've got doubles and then i'll probably just be playing ruben diaz who's got um forest away so that'd be like my back three um, and then obviously Bradley would probably lose his spot and then I'll just get rid of Solanke in 35 and then I mean I, would I get rid of Solanke in 35 because I've only got two Spurs players and three Chelsea players but I mean it could all go wrong like if Petrovic loses his spot then I'll obviously have to make a transfer on him you know Gusto could lose his spot I'd have to make a transfer on him so it could all be going wrong like it wouldn't surprise me this wild card has generally been the worst wild card I've ever had since playing FPL so it, it feels like it definitely could go bad to worse um, so yeah, if, that, if that's the case, then obviously I'll have to use a uh, transfer on one of those. But um, yeah, I'll probably be getting rid of um, Solanke for... I mean, there's not really... I mean, is Werner, is Werner a striker in this game? I mean, I could even... Yeah, he's only 6.3. could even do that as a bit of a punt and just go like Solanke to, to Werner in 35 and just have triple Spurs, triple Chelsea, and then just do that. It's not the greatest idea in the world, but his minutes haven't necessarily been bad. So And he's been playing good football as well. Like he got a goal... Uh, no, he got an assist against West Ham, got an assist against Forest. Could have had more as well, more assists. But that could be one thing that I do in 35, which I'd obviously have the money for. And then I'd have a meal to kind of splash around with on Bradley and stuff. He's a little bit of a differential. Well, he's a massive differential, actually. He's only 1.2% owned. So could actually do that for 35, but that's obviously getting ahead of myself. But if I do do that, then obviously I've got enough money for, for Bradley to be transferred out for, for some whoever, whoever really. Um, uh, and then... Obviously, after that, like that would be that would be potential transfers. But yeah, if I just go with Foden and Diaz, then this is what the team would probably look like. So I'd have Foden instead of Saka, and then I'd have um, I don't know who I'd really bench out of these three for Ruben Diaz because obviously I'd have to play Diaz this week. I don't really probably Van Heck really because it's an away fixture. I know that I, Chelsea have been awful, but Gusto does have that attacking potential. Uh, so I'd just play Diaz probably instead of Van Heck. And it'd be a really strong bench. Definitely bench boost, wor bench boost worthy, 100%. But that's just going to be for double game week 37. Um, but yeah, that's probably the strongest my bench is going to look all season if I do that. Because my bench would literally be Van Heck with Burnley away. Udogi with Newcastle away. Solanke with Man United at home. And then Petrovic who's got Everton at home. So that would just be, like I say, a really good bench. But uh, yeah, that would probably be the situation there. So Diaz and... Um, Diaz and Foden are coming. And it'd look a lot better, obviously, all got looted in the home. But it depends if they start. You never know what's going to happen in Champions League and stuff. So that's that kind of situation. Then, yeah, in 34, free hit. 35, potentially Solanke out for Werner. It doesn't really matter at this point. Like, I want, obviously, be in the top 10k by the end of the season. But it's more fun if you just take punts and stuff and just attack the double. And they've got Chelsea as well in that double. And Chelsea, obviously, are not good at the back at all. So, uh, yeah, I think it'd be quite a nice fixture for Werner, especially with the pace and stuff. So, uh, that would be that. They do a double in 37 as well. So, it's an extra player that's doubling in 37. Um, 
with Werner, who obviously, hopefully, would play both. So I don't actually mind that transfer at all for 35. And then 36, I'd just concentrate on a player that's coming in for 30 for, for 37. So whoever's doubling in 37, probably another United player or something like that. And then just bench boost. And then, yeah, we're, we're really, we're probably really well set up for 37 if I decide to do the Werner move. So I'm not completely against it, to be fair. That's where this situation is heading. We're bringing in Werner in. But at the same time, Werner's probably only getting all these minutes because Richarlison's out. And as soon as Richarlison's back, his minutes are going to get dropped quite a bit. So... Uh, yeah, it probably isn't even the smartest decision to do that. But it would actually be it'd be really, really nice to bring him in. But um, yeah, Johnson's... I mean, Johnson's another player, but it has to, it has to be a striker that'd go out for, for Solanke. So either way, that's the kind of situation there. But uh, yeah, it looks like Ruben, and, uh, Ruben Diaz and Foden in this week. I'm just going to get rid of Saka and just... It is what it is, you know. I'm just going to go with it. And then hopefully he doesn't, doesn't go big and destroy me. But I quite like the, the team this week if I do have Foden and and um, Diaz in but we'll see what happens um, and we'll wait for team news and stuff because like say if Gusto is out then obviously I'll have to sort some stuff out there but he should be fine he's just tired so either way that's going to be my team selection for game week 33 um, there won't be any other videos till Friday now because I'm actually I'm actually recording this on the Monday but I'm away Tuesday Wednesday Thursday so I'll be back on the Friday for my final team selection uh, for, for thoughts final thoughts and everything like that but uh, either way that's my team selection as of right now. Hopefully I don't sleep through the deadline this time because uh, that's what I did uh, for, for Game Week 32. But yeah, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell. And until next time, peace.